Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Five Questions with Leroy Butler. We're back from the bye week. Another and win on the bye week. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, they didn't lose. They're they didn't still lose. undefeated. You know. Yeah, I count. So you know that's probably uh, a marker on their side. Right. Uh, so anyway, we I figured we could talk a little bit about being seven and zero and being undefeated. Um, you know, one of the things that you can just say, I mean, they, they haven't lost a game. Mm -hmm. There's questions about how hard their schedule has been, um, you know, questions about their defense. Mm -hmm. What do you think their attitude is coming into the second half of the season now? They're very confident. You they, think they're so? They're a confident group. They understand the magnitude that is a target on their back. They expect to win every game. They know they got the best quarterback. They know they got the best coach. And overall, they know they got the best team because realistically, they're saying, we haven't even played up to our potential yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we do that, we're going to be great. But right now, we're beating teams and we're just good. Mm -hmm. So and I like the fact that these guys understand there is improvement. But your star players really carries your team time. I mm -hmm. mean, the Woodsons, um, Aaron Rodgers, Jermichael Finley, Greg Jennings, Greg Jennings, you know, Matthews. I mean, you got like 10 players overall that carries your team. Now, the, the other 40 guys on the team, when they get a chance to get out there, they got to make their plays. Right. And they can't hurt the team. Okay. Um, let's talk about one, what, how you think McCarthy will handle um, things, you know, from, from this point on. Is, what, what do you think his... Um, strategy is with the players in terms of keeping them on edge? Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, he loves his players. And I think one thing about it, McCarthy does something a lot of coaches take for granted. He self-scouts. He's going to sit down like he did during the bye week. How many times did I get covered to? How many times somebody blitzed me from the left, right? He's going to come back with all this information, new information for his team, to keep them focused and not be complacent. Mm -hmm. And he also understands that, listen, the last time a team was 7-0, 1962, every game we win, we're making history. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, he challenges them in practice. He puts them in situations, game time situations. And I think he's putting on a clinic. If you're a coach, how do you handle a young, still a relatively young team, right. and keep this guy with blinders on? The big prize is winning a Super Bowl. That's yeah. the only thing we care about. Right. Um, you bring up an excellent point that I was going to reference, which is self-scouting. Yep. This is a thing that um, started with West Coast philosophies, yes. which, yeah. which at, at certain points during the season, they go back and look at all their tendencies. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. are they running the same play out of yep. the same formation on the same down too many times? Right. Are they predicting? Are they reacting to the right, how teams are doing it? I think this is going to be huge for Dom Capers because, you know, teams had the whole offseason to sort of dissect his defense. Right. And now this is the time for him to counterpunch. You've been in this situation. Do, do coaches make significant changes after the buy or after the self-scout? Well, what they do, Tom, they get in a room and they say, look, what are we good at? What mm -hmm. are we known for? How did we get to 7-0? I mean, we're looking at the stats and we're numbered, you know, 29th and deep, just for example, 29th and deep. Yeah. Okay, let's look at it. Why are we so bad against the run? And they'll look at that. And they'll say, okay, why are we so bad against the pass? And they'll come up with schemes, okay? They'll say, okay, what worked and what didn't work? Mm -hmm. The plays, the defense, defenses that didn't work, they'll throw them out. The ones that we're doing very good at, not only will we keep them, but we'll branch off of them. Mm -hmm. We'll put other nuances of defenses around that. And we have to move Matthews around. We cannot come out and a quarterback sees him on the left or the right. They got to see him in the middle, right, left, all over the field. You got to move Woodson around. And you know what, guys? We went to the Super Bowl because we was in our nickel defense. We got to make that better. Right. So the two guys we have in there, if it's B.J. Raji and Pickett or whoever, those guys got to push that pocket and collapse the pocket because that's one thing they're not doing. The quarterbacks, they're just kind of moving around back yeah. there. Yeah. So I think what they've done as a staff is find out what they're good at. 
right. and concentrate on that. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you also talked about um, challenges and McCarthy, you know, um, sort of laying in front of them what challenges are. One of those is the schedule. Yes. Now, you know, yes. they're pretty much past the, the weekend of the schedule, and, you know, they start out with San Diego. Yeah. They got Minnesota at home. We now yeah. know that yeah. could be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, they got Tampa Bay, who you never know with what they're going to do, but they've right. got some talent. Right. And then they got the Lions, the big game, yes. on Thanksgiving. So um, At some point, they got the Giants. And then the Giants right team. after that at yeah. New York. Those, but, that's a back-to-back -back tough game. Yeah. But and, let's talk about that. You know, this is, I think that San Diego game is going to, you know, be pretty big for them, don't you? And the reason why it will be big, because they haven't, other than Drew Brees, if you can play a quarterback and put, enough pressure on your defense to go blow for blow with Aaron Rodgers, you're going to be in a shootout. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, San Diego has just enough talent to put enough pressure on them. I ain't worried about the road, Vic, the road games because McCarthy's a road warrior. Yeah, and plus yeah, there's going to yeah. be like 10,000 Packer fans there. Exactly. They always are in San Diego. Right, there's I mean, we played amount. a Super Bowl out there. I mean, cause people understand that from the West Coast. They're big Packer fans. Yeah. But they got to match these guys. Blow for blow. I mean, that game may be 48 to 49. I don't know. But for the most part, defensively, you got to study because Phillip Rivers will throw you some interceptions, mm -hmm. and you got to catch them. But this schedule is going to get tougher. At some point down the line, they got Oakland, big old physical Absolutely. team that with, runs the ball. With Carson yeah. Palmer, will be more you know, be integrated better. into the Right, offense. so it ain't no the, the, the meat of the schedule is coming up. They got to just stay healthy. I mean, they lost Alex Green for the year. Instead of bringing in another running back, you know, they may bring in Demetri Nance. I don't know. But... They could maybe bring in another a pass rush specialist. If they can Remember, find one. Those right. guys aren't yeah. don't grow. Well, that's on trees, true. Remember we had you know? Keith McKenzie. Yeah. A guy that just all he did was rush the pass. They need a specialist to rush Well the maybe pass. that's Vic Soto. Maybe they have to there start you go. grooming him to yes. do that, to just play him on certain downs. Right. I think the reason people ask me, well, why isn't he playing now? Probably because you know, all of their outside linebacker positions, you have to be multifaceted. You can't just do right. one thing. And, you know, they might be afraid he could get exploited in the passing game yeah. or, you know, bootlegs or whatever. Yeah, you know, that's true. He's inexperienced. But and, I, and I'll put him in on packages third and, you know, 10 or more to where the only thing he has to worry about is screens to his side for the most part. For the most part, go after the quarterback. Yeah, because I remember when um, they just threw Kabir out there. They, they yeah. took him off the practice squad. Yep. The first game, he's got like three and a half sacks. That's right. That's all you good for a son is going after the quarterback. Yeah. They need to start developing a guy like that. And moving on that point a little more, maybe later on down the line, it started to develop another safety. If, you know, Collins can't come back next year, they're not going to trade for anybody. The trade deadline is gone, but they can start developing another guy, bringing a guy, put him on your practice squad, let him start learning. Because sooner or later, because they get an injury at the safety position, yeah, they're toast. Okay. So they got to start developing a guy at that position as well. Right. Exactly. Okay. And and then finally, um, you know, in regard to just where they stand right now. I mean, you know, they've been a they've been a pretty good road team. Yeah. And but they're gonna have to really defend their home field. That's yes. gonna be huge, isn't yeah. it? I mean Yeah, I think for a while, you know, you can go all the way back to Michael Vick in Atlanta coming in there, beat him in a playoff game. Is it was like not really a tough place to play. Now it's a tough place to play. Mm -hmm. The crowd is really into it. It's a hard ticket already, 80,000 names on the list. But you got a team that understands the magnitude. If I win all my home games and split on the road, you get a 12-4 and four record. Right. You know, that may not even be good enough. We want to win them all. Mm -hmm. and, and I think McCarthy's right, and I'll finish with this. He doesn't really want to talk about undefeated until you get to double-digit wins. Mm -hmm. When you get to 12-0, and 0, then it's something you can talk about each week. Other than that, the undefeated talk is kind of – going to be snuffed out because you don't want to think about that and go in and just get beat by a team you're better than. Right. But they got some physical teams. You talked about it. the Giants, Tampa Bay, you know, and Detroit. You know, they're always taking quarterbacks out. Right, right. You know, they took Rodgers out last year. Mm -hmm. So 
they got to be ready for that challenge. The big thing, and I'll just add to that, is that, you know, you said you want to go four and four on the road. Well, they've already got their four road wins right. in. So, so they're playing with house money a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So, and now we'll take our um, Twitter question of the week. Okay. And it comes from Daily Dope Sheet. And he wants to know, is there any recourse for the Packers to appeal the roughing penalty that Clay Matthews, if you remember, in the Vikings right. game, um, had when he hit Christian Ponder, right? Yeah. Uh, now, what I was sorry. told, and thanks for the, the question, keep those questions coming. What I was told was the reason why they threw the flag, because he lifted him. You can't do that to quarterbacks. You can't hit them and drive them into the ground. Mm -hmm. You're going to always get that penalty. Now, when I was taught to make a hit, you were taught to six-inch punch, lift, lift the guy and secure him, you take him down. Mm -hmm. That was textbook. Mm -hmm. But you can't do it on a quarterback. Just like you can't hit him below the knees, Tom Brady rule. So with that being said, they probably won't take it back, and he's probably going to get fined or whatever. But quarterbacks, you cannot drive them into the ground. Right. That's what makes money. you know. Because of that hit on, if it's a hit like that on, and which Rodgers did get hit, but if somebody lifts him up and throw him into the ground, I want the same penalty thrown as well. Yeah, and the recourse is they can send the film to the legal office. They do yeah. it every week. They yep. whatever questionable calls they have, right. they send the tape of it to the legal yeah. office, and the legal yep. office looks at them and says, "Sorry, you know." <laughs> right, right. They give you a letter. Hey, thanks for your inquiry, but no. Yeah, or or oftentimes right. they say, "Oh yeah, you're right." Yeah, we missed one. Yeah, and we get a lot of those letters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I always advise. If there's anything gray area close like that, McCarthy, send it in, have your guys back. But for the most part, we used to get, we used to have like little parties and little, you know, fines and put money in each week to help guys with fines like that. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you go in there and you look in your locker on a Wednesday. Yeah, and like it's a letter in there yeah. uh -oh, for $7,500. It's you know? always a FedEx. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, I didn't hit a guy, but you touched a guy helmet or you draw your socks down. weren't all the way up or your socks and things of that nature so, yeah, so. little things that just kind of have you thinking about right so yeah. great well <laughs> thanks again for joining us for another edition of five questions with Leroy Butler and we'll be back after the San Diego game and thank you again to syndicsmarket.com Ballastery family philanthropist of the year WJ Kuhn in Oak Creek Automotive Center mention my name in Oak Creek they'll give you 10% off thank all you. right and we'll see you next week.